Today we're going to go over excited electron states. Now I know that just makes me excited, so here we go. Now, in order to do this, um, we're going to have to think about what's going on. Um, yes, I can just tell you, hey, this is the answer, this is how you do it. But I want you to understand what's going on, so we're going to go a little bit further in with it. Okay, now things you're going to need to know. You're going to need to know about a guy by the name of Max Planck. Um, in Planck's constant, um, we're going to refer to that as H. Now what he said, or what was said there, was that energy is proportional to our frequency. Now when I'm talking about frequency here, I'm talking about a frequency of light. Okay, um, you might remember back to middle school science, you talked about frequencies. Um, different frequencies are going to put off different colors. Okay, we'll probably talk about that a little bit more in class. But just kind of get you thinking that direction. So, what we have here is we have a constant of H. Okay, when I plug that constant in here, it makes all the numbers work out nice and neat, and we can actually graph it, and it's going to be nice and beautiful. Okay, so what we have here is we have Planck's constant. I have it written up here. You're probably never going to use it in this class, but when you get to college chemistry, you're going to use that for a few things. Um, not a ton, but a little bit. But that's 6.62 times uh, 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds, and that will fit right in here, right here. Okay. So what happens is electrons get excited. Electrons get excited either by adding electricity to them, by shocking them, or we can shine light down on things. If I shine light at a certain frequency, what happens is I go from a stable state, or a ground state, which is what we've been working on, to an excited state. So one of my electrons down at a lower state, or ground state, jump. Now, they can jump to several different places. They can jump several energy levels. We're going to keep it pretty simple, and we're going to let it just jump a level or a level in a subshell. Not going anything too crazy. So let's say that this electron that was here, it jumps to right there. Okay. How am I going to recognize that as being an excited electron? Well, if the electrons, if you solve for the electron um, configuration, and you see that something is out of where it should be using our off boss principle over here. Zach, I'm over here to stop by cookie curve. Here you go. So if we look at it, it's not in this. Cookie clicker, Zach. Then we know it's excited. So if I look at this one right here, it's not in my normal um, location, so I know it's an excited electron. Now, how would I label this? Well, how would I write it down? Okay, this is carbon. So when I write this, Everything to my right is my S. So I have a 1S2, I have a 2S2, I have a 2P1, and in this case I have a 3S1. Okay? That should be a 2P2. Okay? Since I have a 2S or a 3S1 there replacing that, this electron is excited. Now, eventually what happens is the excitement wears off. It's kind of like when you're dating somebody. Eventually the excitement wears off and you go back to being normal. So what happens is the electron is going to fall back down. When it falls back down, some other cool stuff happens. We emit light. So we have light radiation. So as it falls down, it puts off a color of light. Okay, We actually produce light. That can actually be recorded. We can see it. Okay, that's how we get light from stars. We see the light coming off, and uh, different substances are going to produce different colors of light. So that's very important. That's how we can tell what things are made up of. Um, if we know what color it emits, we can see that. When we have neon lights, what makes them light up is we have electrons that are falling back down, and we have light being produced. Now what this light is called, very important, those little guys are called photons. Okay, it's a packet of light energy. Okay, I can shoot the photon back in. If I shot the photon back in, what happens to my electron? It's going to return right back to normal. Okay, it's going to shoot right back to where it was in the excited state. So that can work in both directions. It's pretty cool. All right, now it's time to work a couple example problems. The example problem we're going to work with today is going to be aluminum. Now, if I look at my ground state for aluminum, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. Now, if I want to excite this, there's several different things I can do. Um, 
and there's several right answers. So if you get something that I don't do here, it's fine. It's, it's, it's okay. Um, but just watch to see what I do here. Okay. One example is I can take this 3p electron. Okay. Now, what are electron levels that are above the 3p? I could say 4s, um, 3d, um, it could jump to 4p. So it, it doesn't really matter what I go with here as long as it's something above this level right here. So I can take this 3p and let's make it 3d1. That would be highly acceptable. Um, I could take this and I can make it 4s1. Or P1. Okay. Any of those are acceptable, any of those as long as they're above, that shows it's an excited state. Now eventually it's going to fall back down though and work its way down to 3P1 once again. Okay, but that's not what it's wanting. So any of those ones that we just talked about would be great. If you want to go to the next level, that's okay. It's just going to take more energy. The more energy you apply, the higher up it's going to go. And uh, that's kind of the fun of it. All right. Hopefully this helps you out for your assignment for the weekend. Um, make sure you have it done for Tuesday. Monday, if you come back with any questions, that's the time to get it done. Uh, we'll get you ready for your test, which is going to be early next week. We'll see you later.